So before I start the topic of this new video, I just want to ask, do I look different? Does something look a little different? I dyed my hair and it's very subtle because I wanted it to be like a natural looking color. It actually only really shows when it's bright, like when I'm in direct sunlight. You can kind of tell right now, but it is subtle. It's called Auburn Brown, the color that I got. But you know, I just wanted to switch it up, you know. You know, little winter, little winter shift. Anyway, I like it. I like it because it is subtle and it's not distracting. Anyway guys, so there's a story behind why I thought to make this video. Before I go into that, every time I make a video about this subject of HIV, I get negative backlash because it's such a polarizing topic and it's a very sensitive subject, especially among gay people. So I know just by going into this territory, it's always like entering the lion's den, but I did want to make this video. I have wanted to make this video for a while and I wanted, I have wanted to share this story that inspired the video for a long time. So back when I was in college, this is when I was like 18, 19, I had a friend. And you know, in college you have friends who come from all different backgrounds, right? All parts of the country, all parts of the globe. She was from a very small conservative town in the, in the South, in um, South Carolina, I believe. Or no, she was in the southernmost point of North Carolina. That's what it was. On the border of South Carolina and North Carolina. So she came from a very different world, very different upbringing. Um, and sometimes she would say things that we were just kind of stunned by her level of narrow-mindedness and like how sheltered she had been her whole life. And I'll never forget the time that she, and she did not know that I was gay. I was not out at that time. Um, it was freshman year of college, like I had just gotten there. So she didn't know, but she blurted out to all of us that she would never want to have a gay son or gay child because gay men are more promiscuous and therefore way higher chances of getting HIV. <laughs> and I was just so stunned by this on multiple levels, right? I was stunned that somebody first off had the audacity to like vocalize that kind of Thing that is so clearly rooted in ignorance um, without considering perhaps there are gay people around. <laughs> That's number one. But number two, this implication, this stereotype that gay men are promiscuous. And to say it with such conviction like it must be true. And then of course, the element of HIV as if, as if you have to be promiscuous to get it, A. There's many ways to get HIV. B, to get HIV you must be gay, as if like you can't be straight and promiscuous, or just straight and, and not promiscuous, but still get HIV. So there's multiple levels to that ignorance, right, of that, um, that statement from her, but I never forgot it. And I think as a gay person especially, throughout your life, especially throughout your childhood, there are these like uh, moments where in so many ways it's told to you like, nobody wants a gay child for whatever reason. I remember another time when I was getting um, a ride back home from a, I think it was a, a cross country, because I was a runner in high school, a cross country meet, like a race uh, with a guy on the team. And his mom said something along those lines too, like, oh, I would never want to have a gay son because it's just such a hard life and blah, 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 blah. So these moments have always marked me in life where people just felt the need to blurt that out, again, not realizing there could actually be gay people around listening to this kind of rhetoric. Ironically, these very experiences of being told over and over throughout life that you are inadequate because you're gay or that you're not wanted and all that stuff, I think it goes back to that original story with the girl from college that I mentioned. I think that's actually why so many gay men do get HIV because a lot of their life is spent trying to fill a void, seeking validation, and at times, no matter the cost. So when people say, oh, gay men are more promiscuous, I think that totally misses the mark. You know, you have a lot of gay men who will say, well, it's not gay men, it's just men are sexual creatures and promiscuous, so it's just a man thing. I also don't think that that's true. I think all people, I think 
all men, all women have a sexuality. There's different levels among individuals, obviously, of promiscuity, of sex drive, and all those things. But if we really dissect why there are such high rates of HIV among gay men in particular, I think it's such a deeper rooted issue. I think the desperation that we see at gay bars or on apps like Grindr, and also the desperation that we partake in ourselves, like I'm the first to admit I've had moments of weakness on these apps, but the, the level of it, you know, that you'll log in, right? And then you turn it off, you go to work, you go to lunch, whatever, you come back and you have like all these messages from sex crazed guys sending you a million pictures eager to meet in like five minutes if you're down for it. I think it's much deeper than just being promiscuous or just being wired that way. I think that um, as a society, there's so much chagrin that is brought to gay men and such a, uh, a despondency and a, a feeling that they have to, to prove themselves. A lot of gay men, I think, end up turning towards sex, relationships, dating, whatever the case, just attention from other men to fulfill that which they never had up until adulthood or even through adulthood. And I think different gay men react differently, right? There's the book, The Velvet Rage, which I've talked about on this channel before. That book talks a lot about gay men feeling like they have to prove themselves. And therefore, so many become uber successful as doctors, lawyers, whatever the case is, businessmen. Um, and I think there's another crop of men who turn to sex for that validation. Like if that's where they see that they can get attention and feel that quick high of validation, that's where they go. And they are the ones who end up on Grindr or at the bar at 4 a.m. every Friday, every Saturday, every Sunday, and so on. Now, of course, there are practical elements to this question of like, why do gay men have this stereotype? Why are rates so much higher with gay men? For example, gay men can get pregnant, right? So gay men are inherently less likely to wear a condom uh, during sex than a straight couple. Of course, you're still susceptible to STDs without protection, but having one less thing to worry about with pregnancy, I think that already encourages more men to, um, to avoid using a condom. Speaking of the Velvet Rage, in the book, the author does also say that he went through a period in his life and he knows other gay men who were so melancholy and just so uh, despondent with their lives that it was almost like they were on the path to getting HIV. Like, not that they wanted to, but almost passively self-destructive, like passively suicidal in a sense of like, this might as well be the way that my misery ends. And I find that very interesting because that's linked to this concept in psychology of self-fulfilling prophecy. Meaning if your whole life there's uh, a stereotype of how your life is supposed to be based on being poor, based on being gay, based on being black, Asian, whatever, um, you're more likely to fulfill that because it's all you've ever been taught kind of thing. So there is that element as well, that if gay men are taught, hey, you're gonna get HIV, this is like the legacy of gay men, some will actually, this is the concept in psychology, the theory is some men will actually falter to that because it feels like that's the natural path that's been laid out for them anyway. Curious as always what you guys think about this, let me know in the comments.